Smith. Um, I am a regional agronomic manager, uh, kind of covering that northern Indiana zone as well as Michigan. For the past five years, I've been an ag agronomist uh, for various seed companies throughout the industry. And, you know, I've always been preaching, you know, late nitrogen, applying a application in crop right where that crop demands it in terms of protection of yield. You know, kind of talking about this system. So I really s feel passionate behind uh, 360 Yield Center and kind of what all that brings to a farmer in terms of finding that yield advantage. So before I get started talking about undercover, its uses, its pattern, and products that we can use to capture yield, I want to start you off with a video. Okay, this video is going to show you the spray pattern distribution within a canopy of whichever plant control product you want to use. So I'll walk you through a few scenarios where I believe that this is a great fit, but when you see this distribution, think to yourself of products that you use or th are thinking about using and think about the potential of being able to apply in the canopy timely, efficiently, at your crop prote protection zone, you know, those leaves that are truly contributing the most yield. So just think of the possibilities of application. So the undercover module is that black football that we have mounted on that Y drop itself. Here we can see this mist or fog pattern that is within that crop canopy for accurate placement to protect our yield. Here we see that that boom's moving through our crop. We've targeted our ear leaf, which we know is that leaf that contributes the most to yield, and we truly have excellent cover coverage within that canopy. You know, looking at that fog, we've all driven through a fog before. We know how difficult it is to find breaks in it. So essentially, we're covering every square inch of plant foliage within that canopy with whatever product you decide to use. So when I think of a new product or a new concept, I like to bring it back to the basics. You know, why? Why does this product give us an advantage? What are some uses for this product? And Greg teed it up excellently this morning. You know, talking about the yield potential of an acre of corn. Acre of corn without any stresses. You know, we're 500 to 600 bushels an acre. I grew up in southern Michigan. Our farm has not received rainfall for a month. Okay, typically our yield environments where I'm working with are 150 to 200 bushels, okay? It's not like the 300 plus that's behind us. You know, I know the value of capturing every kernel on that ear and protecting it to get it from pollination to that grain car at the end of the day. So the question is, how do we do it? Okay, for the past five years I've worked in the seed industry, selecting genetics based on soil type, populations, environmental conditions that achieve that highest yield potential possible. When I think of the lineups that I've had, you know, my best hybrid to my worst hybrid, we were probably in that 25 to 30 bushel range, you know, top to bottom, which is truly a step change. You know, we think of where genetics have led us in terms of breeding, in terms of withstanding more stresses throughout the season. We've made leaps and bounds, okay? But it takes a bit more. There's 30 bushels. If we're getting to 500, we've got to do something a little bit different. Greg talked about subdrip irrigation this morning, being able to deliver water when and where it is critical for that plant. In addition to that, think of the fertility implications. Here we talk about Y drop. We talk about subdrip irrigation in that IV type of an aspect. Being able to deliver whatever product is necessary at that timing is critical. So subdrip irrigation is going to get us a lot further than what we are today. But really what Undercover helps us do is to focus on those two center uh, subjects of that pyramid, crop protection and crop nutrition. So I'm an agronomist by training, so I'm going to get a little technical on you. Think of, think of your cornfield back home. Think of all the times you walk through that cornfield scouting. What are some things that you scout for today? You scout for diseases, scout for insects, scout for deficiencies, nutrients, right? Okay, let's go a little deeper. What kind of uh, full, um, diseases are we scouting for within that corn crop? 
Okay, we've got gray leaf spot, we've got northern corn leaf blight, we've got rust, just to name a few. Think of the insects we scout for in different times. We've got Japanese beetles that will cut silks. We've got adult um, rootworm beetles that will prune our roots and lay eggs for the following year. And our soybean canopy, I live in southern Michigan, we get soybean aphids every year. It's not a question of when we're going to get them. It's it's not a question of if, it's when we're going to get them and what sever severity and do we go out and make an application. Now you think of micronutrient deficiencies. In northern Indiana, you can go a few feet, we go from a blow sand to uh, a muck. You know, we have variation within fields and we know that our fertility is changing across those soil gradients. You know, how do we match what the changes are within that crop? This like I said, I'm an agronomist, so we're going to get technical here. Let's break it down a little bit further. Think of the diseases that wreak havoc on this corn plant, okay? I mentioned gray leaf spot. Is gray leaf spot a top-down disease or is that a bottom-up disease? It's a bottom-up disease, right? We're coming out of residue, we're coming out of soil, okay? Gray leaf spot's in the lower of the plant. Northern corn leaf blight, for those of you who have seen it, is that a bottom-down or is that a top-up disease? top-down disease, right? Rust, top-down, bottom-up, it's a top-down. So here we have two locations in the plant where we have that pathogen coming in to rob ourselves of yield. So the question is, how do we best control it? Today, what do we do for foliar diseases? Well, the easy answer is we fly a plane across the field at brown silk and make an application. The question is, why do we fly at brown silk? Well, traditionally, that's when the majority of our foliar diseases are going to be prevalent. And from a crop safety standpoint, that's where we're not hurting ourselves in terms of yield to protect it. Okay? Logistically, we fly a plane, we've got our application on it, two gallons an acre. Okay? What's the other timing that we have? That V5 to V6 stage, right? Okay. Why are we making that application then? Do we have diseases present? Typically not. We might have some anthracnose creeping in, but traditionally that early in the season, we don't have a lot of foliar diseases prevalent. But what we do know is that uh, foliar fungicides contribute to yield. You know, they've shown year in and year out statistics of showing um, plant health characteristics that keep that plant green alive longer, being able to utilize more nitrogen and water within the soil to extrapolate yield, right? Those are things that we know. So why not take a good product? You know, we know that these uh, fungicides are good products. Let's make them great, okay? Let's apply them at the time, the rate, and precise placement on that plant that we can best extrapolate yield. So when I think of the two timings that we make in fungicide today, you know, we have that brown silk, so we're up high with that application, our V5 and V6, so we're pretty low on the plant. Today, in that cornfield behind us, that application made at V5 and V6, that leaf that's protected is probably that la last leaf on the plant or that leaf has fallen off into the ground. So my question is, how do we make it better? And when I think about this, I think of a story that relates to me a little bit, and I promise you up front, there is a point to this story, so bear with me. So this year, I was gonna take over baking the Easter ham for my family. Okay? I've watched my mom do it. I've watched my grandma do it for years. It didn't look that hard. I can handle this. Okay? They chopped off the ends of the ham, put it in the pan, socked it in the oven for a couple hours. Voila, Easter dinner. Everybody's happy. So me, doing as I've seen for many, many years, cut off the ends of the ham, put it in the pan, threw it in the oven. Okay? A couple hours, you have a little bit of time to, to chat about nothingness. So I asked the question, Mom, why do you cut the ends off of the ham? You know, do you get better temperature exchange? You know, me thinking extremely technical. I, I feel as though there has to be a reason why this is done. So I asked this question of my mom, and she said, I don't know. Go ask your grandma. That's the way she's always done it, so that's why I did it. Okay. So I went and found grandma. I was like, grandma, what's, what's the reason you cut off the ends of the ham? You get better temperature exchange, you keep the moisture in the meat longer. You know, what is it? There has to be something. She looked me smack square in the eye and said, I didn't have a big enough pan. So just because 
we are applying at brown silk today, just because we are applying at V5, V6 today, doesn't mean that's the best time and the best placement of that product. Getting into that crop canopy, protecting that ear leaf. We know that ear leaf is the most important leaf on that plant. How do we protect that and to deliver more yield? If we can target that and make sure we have that application within that top half of the plant, you know, that's where more than 75% of our carbohydrates are produced for grain fill. Okay, this year we have the longest grain fill period we've had in a long time because it's cool, we have moisture, we have extreme yield possibilities out there. If we can feed it with fertility and if we can protect it with, you know, a fungicide or plant health agent. So when I think of other applications, you know, we covered diseases. Let's think of insects that rob ourselves of yield every year, okay? Japanese beetles will come through and clip silks, okay? If we clip a silk, we don't get it pollinated, we're losing kernels, we're losing grain, we're losing yield. So those are going to focus primarily in the middle of the plant. Let's think about corn aphids. Anybody ever, you know, fly a plane across the field and deliver insecticide for corn aphids? You better not shake your head yes, because I know you're not telling the truth. So, you know, corn aphids are one of those things that have been out of our control because we haven't s really seen the utility in terms of controlling them with the de delivery mechanisms we have today. Whereas, you know, we think about corn rootworm beetles. Traditionally, it's hot and very dry this time of year, so they're going to concentrate down towards that soil surface. So if you think of the gradient of insect pressure in that plant, we have about 10 feet where those insects can lie and rob our crop of yield. So being able to get into that canopy to make an applied direct application of insecticide is going to be critical. Okay, today what we do, we fly the plane across the field at two gallons an acre for our insect con control. You know, the question is, do we get that product down in that canopy where we truly need control? Here, we know that we do because we do have that mist, we do have that fog that we do coat that entire plant with. You know, along with getting good coverage within the crop canopy, think about off-site movement. Okay, Jim mentioned the fact of fertility implications on our drinking water. We've been hearing about honeybees for years. You know, off-site target of our insecticides are wreaking havoc on our, our honeybee populations and our pollinators. You know, making sure we're in that canopy, making a direct application and not moving off-site is critical. And then I'm also reminded <laughs> very well of my family's farm in southern Michigan. Okay, we're not blessed with 200 contiguous acres behind me. You know, I've got 20 acre fields. They're surrounded by trees. I can't always get a plane to fly them. And if they do fly them, I might not get good coverage. So here, you know, you can retrofit a, a self-propelled sprayer, a pull-behind sprayer. You have possibilities to get into that crop outside of that airplane, knowing that we are making a more targeted application. So also think of nutrients. Okay, many micronutrient packages are out there on the market. We know that we do have deficiencies in some soil types. Today, is, is micronutrient an earlier or a late applied um, practice on your farm? It's most of the time, we're kind of early. I think of boron, I think of sulfur, zinc, manganese. You know, those are earlier season products for me and corn. So when I think of that V2 to V4 time frame from when I make that application, I see a lot of soil surface. So if I'm coming across my crop with a boom, I see myself painting that soil surface more than I see that product adhering to that leaf tissue. So thinking back to that video that I showed you to begin with, that mist, that kind of 3D rolling type of fog in your, in your field, you get more of that product to adhere to your plant to help you deliver more consistent results on whichever package that you are using. So here are a few photos that Jim snapped for me the other day. And Jim commonly uses a foliar applied fungicide, okay? He flew it this year at Brown Silk. And Jim, you're probably at about R3 or 4 now, aren't you? So we've had some time progress, but here's the ear leaf. Here's the leaf below the ear leaf, okay? We have gray leaf spot lesions. 
So a few things could have happened. You know, one, the disease could have moved in later. Granted, we've got a lot of water here recently, so maybe that disease came up right after we made that application. But just maybe, we didn't get that crop canopy penetrated well enough. Okay, at two gallons an acre, you know, really making sure we get that product concentrated within that canopy, per perhaps we didn't get it all the way to that year leaf, which is where yield is derived. So here, you know, you can make a timely in-season pass. You could go back and, you know, pull the trigger at any day and make an application within that crop using the undercover system. Also, that picture on the right, soybean diseases. We know how quickly they can spread, and that's not something that you want to plan for. You can't plan for it a week in advance. You're out scouting. You see it. You want to pull the trigger. You want to protect that yield. So being able to timely, accurately deliver that product is key. So I wanted to leave you with this image of what the coverage pattern of that undercover system looks like. Okay, you can see multiple nozzles applying at multiple different angles within that crop at a true mist to get the top and bottom of those leaf surfaces. You know, a lot of systems don't quite cover the bottom of that plant where all the stomata lie, and we know that if we protect the stomata, we know that that will extrapolate to yield. So accurate placement of that product for the best use efficiency is key.